Hi everyone, if you have done any air conditioning design, you know that we often design based on concept, just on paper. We never know if our calculation is correct until the system starts running. Of all calculation, cooling load is the most critical one. After all, every subsequent calculation we do is based on the cooling load. Now, I've been staying in this room for about a year now, and I want to see if I calculate the cooling load of this room, will it match with what I've experienced so far? So, in this video, I'll show you how I calculate, what is the result and what can we learn from there. Okay, let's start with some background story. I moved to this room for over a year now. This is a 320 square feet bedroom with an 18,500 BTU per hour air conditioner. The type of the air conditioner is known as split air conditioner or mini split if you are from the US. So when we are renovating this house 6 years ago, I sized this air conditioner based on 60 BTU per hour per square feet. So far the air conditioner has been performing well. I can say this capacity is just right, not too big, not too small. Why? Because I said this is also my home office. During daytime, I set the temperature to 25 degrees Celsius and fan speed at level 1. But I must say, I can't really stand very cold. That's why I don't set at 24 or 23 degrees Celsius. Last year around June, it is really hot here. I had to set the temperature to 23 degrees Celsius and the fan speed at least level 2 to be able to keep up with the uh, room temperature. If the air conditioner capacity is too small, I'll probably still feel hot despite setting the temperature to the lowest possible. In comparison, the air conditioner in my previous bedroom was sized based on 70 BTU per hour per square feet. It was a little bit too much because sometimes I feel cold with the same temperature setting. If an air conditioner is oversized, when the weather is not so hot, you feel cold because it can't reduce its capacity any further. So this is the background story and what I've experienced so far. Now let's properly calculate the cooling load of this room and see how it goes. The method I'll be using is called the Radian Time Series or RTS. This is one of the two load calculation methods suggested by X-Ray. Now, X-Ray provided all the formulas required to perform the RTS calculation. However, it is still very complex to calculate by hand. So I created an Excel calculator to help me out. This is the RTS Excel calculator. I provided this calculator for all of my students in my RTS cooling load calculation course. So by the way, if you're interested, check out the link in the description. So for the first step, we need to establish the design conditions. The actual process is much more complicated. So for this video, we'll just briefly go through them. The design condition is based on the location and the design data, we can use what is provided by X-Ray. So for my bedroom, here are my design month, design time, other location details, and the indoor design temperature is 75 degree Fahrenheit, which is 24 degrees Celsius. Okay, now we'll start with these small windows. This window has a blind and it has three separate sections. Two fixed windows and one openable window. The glass is single layer without any tin or coating. My rough measurement suggests that the glass is about one quarter in thickness. So on the RTS calculator, I set the orientation, the angle and the nearby ground type. These are complicated inputs to explain here, so we'll just skip to the next one, which is the window height and width. After that is the glass type, which I selected and coated single glazing. So one quarter inch thickness and clear glass. We can also choose other glass type if that's applicable. Next one is the frame type. The RTS method treat the glass and the frame separately. Later, when we calculate the wall area, we'll exclude the entire window area. Here, I select vertically installed, fixed window mounted in aluminium frame without thermal brick. After that is the construction type. 
This is unique to the RTS method. Basically, we can choose between light, medium, and heavy. Lastly, it's about overhang shades. So do we have any walls or building that shades the window from the sun? Here, as I pull out the layout drawing, you can see we actually have a small wall protrude out, which provides us a little bit of shading to this small window. This is called the vertical projection. If the overhang is above the window, it is called the horizontal projection. So our projection depth is 1.75 feet and recess, meaning how far the projection is away from the window is about 2.53 feet. So upon entering all the information, we got four results here. Because our window has overhang shades, and also blind, we need to use this value. If the window doesn't have overhang shades, we use this value. If the window has overhang shades but not blinds, we use this value. If the window has nothing, then we use this value. You can see without any shades, the cooling load is obviously higher. So this is for the fixed windows. For the operable window, we do the same with the frame type change to operable with that we are done with this small window so on the same section we now move on to calculate the cooling load for the wall so the calculation is uh, roughly the same we need to enter the orientation tilt angle and the nearby ground type and for walls we need to provide the surface color and also the surface tilt again these are complicated inputs which i'll explain in depth in my online course so the next input is the wall area and then the wall type. For the wall type, X-ray provided a few standard wall types. However, they are all walls with insulation. Here in Malaysia where I live and a lot of nearby countries like Singapore, Hong Kong and even India, our walls don't usually have insulation. So the X-ray provider one, we can't really apply directly. So we need to use a tool, uh, they call the CTS generator. This is also provided by X-ray by the way. So this is the CTS generator. For my bedroom wall, it is uh, one layer of plastering, followed by four inch brick, and then another layer of plastering. So we enter the, the code as per the X-ray instruction. And then we click generate and then we have our custom CTS value. So the CTS value will go here, we we'll paste it here. And then we need to select the same construction type to get the cooling load result. So with that, we are done with uh, one side of the room and we have three more sides to go. So uh, the process is uh, repetitive. So I'll just skip everything. Then we show you the final result. Okay, after calculating all of the windows and walls, I also included the sliding glass door, which is also calculated differently. And also the interior walls. The other side is adjacent to the interior wall, like toilet and also the, the hallway. Uh, they are not exposed to sunlight, as well as the roof, people, lighting and my computer equipment heat gain. So after everything is calculated, this is the summary. In total, the cooling load is 19,000 BTU per hour. Remember, the air conditioner installed here is 18,500 BTU per hour. This is my second time looking at the number. When I first calculated it, I was surprised how close the number was. Maybe I was just lucky for this particular uh, room. I know a lot of times we look at the calculation result and like, is that even correct, right? Anyway, load calculation is an important and also an essential skill for whoever going for HVAC, uh, particularly in design. In the future, energy standard will be higher and cooling load calculation is a very valuable skill. So back to my result, since I'm using a split air conditioner, there's no need to do a psychrometric analysis or calculate the cooling coil size. You know, the on-coil, off-coil, those things. If you are doing for a commercial building, you need to account for the outdoor air. That's where the uh, psychometric analysis come in and 
you need to decide the on coil condition, off coil condition to find the suitable cooling coil size. If you want to learn that, I have a video you can watch. I will link it in the description below. And also after you got this result, we must see this is actually based on 3 p.m. design time. This is what I've set you know, roughly based on experience. This is changeable. We can select other times and see if the cooling load increase or decrease. And we want to choose the design time with the highest cooling load. So this is known as a design for the peak cooling hour. Lah. So for example, if I choose 2 p.m., you see the cooling load is slightly lower and 1 p.m. also lower, 4 p.m. also lower. So apparently 3 p.m. is the peak cooling hour. So from my experience uh, here, uh, 3 p.m. is usually the, the highest one. Sometimes in other country or other regions, 2 p.m. or 1 p.m. is the highest one. So with this type of 24-hour uh, cooling load uh, profile, we can actually plot a load profile which is very useful for sizing chiller, uh, designing the operation sequence and the overall understanding of uh, how cooling load affect a building over one day, right? All this load profile, that's another topic for another time. So if you are interested in that, uh, make sure to follow my channel. And if you want me to discuss other topic, uh, feel free to recommend it in the comment below. That's all for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. If you are interested to learn how to perform the RTS method, so do check out my RTS coding load calculation course. I'll link in the description below. And I'll see you in the next video.